What's going on YouTube? My name is Jim and today we're unboxing the HPI Racing Baja 5B TSKB Class 1. This is a racing buggy. It is a one-fifth scale so it's very large and it is a gasoline two-stroke engine so you will be mixing gasoline and oil in order for this vehicle to actually run. Now we're just going to bust out all the goodies that are inside the box and then we're going to do an overview of this actual Baja. So the first thing we get is we do get a wall charger for the built-in battery that is in the electronics. We also do get a antenna tube. They do include some four AA batteries for the actual transmitter. They also do give us some Baja racing decals which is very nice. There is a registration card for this actual vehicle, an important information card, so read this, as well as a body installation, taking it on and off guide. It's a little difficult, we'll come back to this. There is a engine startup guide in here as well. There's also a TF45 user guide and manual, and then we do have the Baja 5B 2.0 version. This is the user guide parts list manual, everything you need in that packet. Now they do give us a few bags of goodies here. We have a spare parts bag. They give us an oil filter. There's some body clips and extra spur gear as you guys can see. Now they do include some optional parts that you guys can use to actually enhance your vehicle's performance in this bag, as well as some tools. Now these tools are very good tools. They're all metal, they're very durable. You guys will definitely use these in the future. The last bag that we get here too is all our fluids. So we have two engine cycle oil. We also have different shock weights. We have thread lock, we have oil filter in here, and then grease as well for our differential. Now the TF45 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, it does have built-in fail safe. It's three channels, very nice. We have servo start and end points, and then we do have a screwdriver on these sides so we can make those endpoint adjustments very nicely. On the bottom base, we have the four AA batteries. We also have a space that can hold four more AA batteries in the future. On the back, we do have this orange hand grip. It's very nice. It's rubber, it's removable. They give you two, one is smooth and then one is actually textured. So it depends on how you guys like your transmitter to feel in your hand. Taking a look at the body for the first time. Now I've already removed all the nuts and bolts that are holding it down to the actual chassis. I just wanted to go over the body and then I'll show you step by step on how we actually take it off. So fully painted, fully decaled, we do have the heavy duty plastic roll cage. And then what we are basically using is Lexan panels on here, which are very nice. We do have the TSKB class one decal as well as the Kraken decal. Very nice body overall. It is a little bit heavy. It's gonna weigh down your vehicle just a little bit, but the roll cage is nice. It does expand a little bit further in the back of the vehicle than where the engine is. And then we do have these side windows right here. And they're a very nice mesh here and they're held in with four zip ties. Very clean look all the way around. From the front, it looks like a boat. It's very narrow. And then it does expand very long into the back. Now again, these Lexan panels can be removed with a nut and screw, so you guys can put on different panels in the future if these get damaged, or if you wanna change the look of your actual Baja for a little change. Underneath, you guys can see this roll cage fully. It does wrap around the bottom chassis in the back, and then it does you know, lock into the front obviously with the nut and bolts. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to just show you where these nuts and bolts go. I don't wanna to spend too much time, but essentially we have a skid plate in the front here. It has four screws. Underneath that, we have four more bolts, two that go in the back, two that go in the front. We also have a longer screw and bolt, and those basically go on the sides, and then two more plastic pins that go in the back. Check out the installation manual for the actual body, taking it on and off. Takes a few times to get used to it. Very simple, but we basically have the skid plate. Four screws will go into there. Once you remove that, you will be presented with two other screws. These are locking the actual body down to the front of the chassis. 
Now on these sides, there's also another screw hole here. This will lock the sides of the body down to the chassis. Again, there's a screw, one on each side. On the back here, we do have a motor plate. You can take this off or you can take the body clip off and kind of bend it like I'm doing. And then we have a spot where the body actually gets screwed down to the back of the chassis here. As you guys can see, it kind of wraps around the back of the actual vehicle. Now, there's also these holes on top. So this is just a shot from below. I'll show you guys a shot here from above. So there are these two holes right here. And basically, those plastic body clips will basically slide into those. And then you will use body clips below those to actually lock them into place. So very interesting setup here on how to actually get the body on and off. Make sure you guys make your fine tune adjustments before you go out and race this vehicle around. Jumping into the actual Baja 5B, this is what the vehicle looks like without the actual body on there. It's very big, again, one-fifth scale. Now, the front suspension here, I just wanna point out everything on here is using heavy-duty plastic. It's also using composite material as well. I did notice that the A-arms on the bottom are the exact same ones as the ones on the Mustang Boss. They're actually just flipped around, which was kind of interesting. If you guys wanna check out that video, I will have it posted at the end of this video and I did a little review on that. So the carriers on here are a heavy duty plastic. They do go up into some composite material. The A-arms on here are very nice. They're very thick and solid. I definitely don't see you guys breaking these unless you run into something at full speed. Now the tires here, we are using a grippy rodeo tire. These are beadlock tires. They're very nice. I love the color. It matches the body perfectly. And then we do have the beadlock on the other side. It is also orange to keep this vehicle's tire uniform. Now the tread on here is very thick. This is real rubber. They're foam inserted. They feel really nice. And the tread is actually cut pretty deep into the tire. So they do grip very well. Now the actual suspension system, we are using long stroke VVC HD racing shocks. These are fully aluminum. They're already oil filled. They do give you some extra fluid for these. The front and the back have different weights, but they are threaded so you guys can actually adjust the tension in the spring. Every single shock has a rubber boot on it. It will keep out the dirt and debris from driving around and keep your shocks going. Now, I will say this has an awesome steering system. It is a bell crank steering system. It is using big rods with actual composite material for both of the ends. And then the horn on the actual steering servo, it is aluminum and you guys can definitely make adjustments to this. Now, moving on to the receiver box, this is housed in a waterproof casing. Now it does have these little rubber pieces on here so you can access your receiver as well as the battery charging port. And then we do have an antenna in the front. Now it's very easy to take this off. It's basically one body clip and then there's some clips in the back where you will slide it. Now the actual charging port actually has a little plastic piece you need to rotate to one side. It will become loose and then you can actually take off the receiver cover. Inside, we see a 6-volt, 300-milliamp battery, and then we do have the charging port. We also do have our radio receiver in there with all our wires. Now, I do have to say right where I'm grabbing, this is your on and off switch. How you access this is underneath the vehicle on the underside of the chassis. It's very easy to feel. It is also housed in a rubber casing, so it is waterproof. We do have another servo. This is our servo for our throttle and our brake. It is located towards the front and it goes all the way back to the disc brake there. I do have to let you guys know the fuel tank on this thing will get you around 30 to 35 minutes. This is a 700 cc fuel tank, very nice. Everything on this body can basically be taken off of the vehicle. As you guys can see, there is body clips both on the receiver, the fuel tank, so you guys can take these out. And then we are protected underneath with the aluminum chassis as well. Now we do have the air filter on top here. It is already pre-oiled. This is very simple to take off. There's simply a body clip, and then we will turn this plastic piece to unlock it. 
and then you guys can take off that air filter, clean it out, slap a new one on. Very simple and easy to use. Moving on to the rest of the vehicle, we have the carburetor here. We have the primer, the high and low speed needle. So you guys will be using this to tune and then our actual throttle. And you guys can set this up however you guys need to. Now I will say we do have a motor guard on this vehicle too. It's kind of flimsy and plastic, but it does work. It will keep dirt and debris out. We are rocking the 26SCC gasoline engine. This is two stroke. We have our pole start on this side. We also do have a stop button on here as well. Now I do have to say there is another 26SCC motor sticker on top. And then there is the spark plug on there as well. So all set, ready to go. This is the motor guard. As you can see, there is some differential fluid and things like that already on here. Don't worry if yours has a little bit of this in there. It's totally fine. It basically just slaps in and then there's a body clip to keep it secure from underneath. Now moving on to the other side, there is basically your choke. It's a red lever. I did notice though, however, it is hitting my throttle and my brake right here. Not sure if this is normal or if there's something wrong with my current model that I have. If you guys know, please leave this in the comments below. The only way I could get the choke to work is if I held the throttle down to full, it would basically move out of the way and then I could move the throttle down, but it still seemed to be a small hiccup in this actual review. Now moving on to the actual transmission here, we do have a cover. There's two screws and body clips holding it in. It's very simple and nice. Make sure to always run it with the cover on. We have a big heavy duty metal pinion gear and then we do have a plastic spur gear with an e-clip at the end and they do include the second spur gear on there as well. And then behind that we do have our steel disc brake. Now these things are very nice because they are dual vented so they're going to stay nice and cool when you guys actually do need to apply a little bit of braking. So again, make sure you guys do reapply the cover and do not drive this vehicle without this actually being on and in place. In the back, we do have a high flow exhaust muffler. Now there's nothing in the back to stop your back from getting dirty. So just make sure you guys clean off your shocks and things as it gets dirty. We do have the vicious torque differential in the back. It is metal differentials. We do have protective CVD boots on here. And then we do have the Super HD drive shafts. So very heavy duty stuff going on in the back here. Now I did notice too that the suspension system in the back is using a heavier weight for the actual fluid in the shocks. So just be aware of that because it does have that heavy motor in the back. And then we do have the end of our chassis here, which connects to our body, as I was stating earlier in the video. Now we do rock a four millimeter aluminum chassis all the way from the front to the back. In the front, we have a skid plate covering up part of it. And then we do have this motor guard covering up the back here, but very nice system. We also do have our motor mount screws on here as well. And then another shot of our differential so that was a quick overview of this Baja B5 TKS B Class 1. I would definitely recommend this vehicle for anybody who is going to a dirt track, a, a larger track, or anyone who has a large space to run this vehicle in. Again, it's a one-fifth scale two-stroke gas engine. I would, wouldn't really recommend driving this in like a suburban area or a city type area. You're gonna definitely wanna have a lot of room and it does make quite a bit of noise. So if you guys need to know more, you can go to hpiracing.com or dollarhobbies.com where we do sell this vehicle as well as all the parts. Until next time, I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.